Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Tong Fu versus Ehome. This is game two of a best of three showdown. We're in the Summit 3, brought to you by Gigabyte G1 Gaming. I'm LD, and I have the pleasure to be joined here by Blaze. How you doing, Blaze? Doing good. Uh, after that first one, definitely have to just get the energy for rolling because uh, that escalated quickly. That was a very fast uptake from Ehome, just able to capitalize on the weak point of Tong Fu, where they weren't able to team fight at certain uh, intervals, getting the control of the Roche Pit, just knowing when to push uh, Tong Fu's buttons. And I, I think that definitely came down a little bit to the draft, but a lot more in execution. E Home really were able to defend their side of the map appropriately, and every single attempt by Tong Fu just fell flat. And, and uh, in part, I mean, the, the Earthshaker play wasn't great. A lot of people will target that and say the Fishers were pretty off, and I'll agree with that, but. There were other things. I mean, the Juggernaut not able to really get his spells off the way he wanted to in the fights, and in general, the the way the landing phase played out for the Brewmaster. There, there definitely was a lot of ground to make up, and uh, we'll see if they can start off on a better foot here. They go for a very interesting draft. They go for the Broodmother Queen of Pain, and that's an opener I have absolutely never seen, but I could see a couple of benefits to it. Obviously, the Queen of Pain in general is a strong hero with some really good nuke damage, um, also can disjoint things like the magic missile Venge got through, so you have to worry about that. Um, but going for the Broodmother this early on in the draft, it's very telling. Your enemy is going to be drafting a lot of AoE nukes, but if you can kind of circumvent that, find ways to just slip through the the webs and find opportunities to kill off lower or more vulnerable supports or just farm the jungle with the spiders that's fine like you don't have to put the spiders on the towers feed them away to anchor smash and raises you can actually just use them as a farming tool that doesn't actually give anything to the enemy team it takes a lot of micro takes a lot of precision but maybe it's more zex bingo's hero than a brewmaster all right well as for you home here pick number four coming out now the good spread of team fight of physical and magical damage here the the Tidehunter can be your answer to the Brood in the lane. As you mentioned, you pick it up early. You give the other enemy team a chance to construct some potential counters for the hero. And, well, let's see what else Ehome are going to get. They've got their Venge. Uh, probably want that uh, that secondary support soon. There's still an Earthshaker out there, though we, generally we don't see those two defensive supports together. Um, i trying to think what else do Ehome like to run as far as their supports go. We saw that Shadow Shaman last game. They've run some Witch Doctor. Doesn't seem like a great Witch Doctor game. Uh, Shadow Demon they've run once in a while. Lion, I assume, has been banned. Yeah, he has. So it's kind of a thin support pool at this point. Yeah, I mean, the, the Venge obviously was the best ideal grab. She's definitely that tier one support. The Rubik is not too bad in reaction to, like, the Tide Hunter trying to get Ravage or even just a, a good spell from Venge. Uh, all of her actives have some value to take off the table or chain stun, but Spirit Breaker is going to be picked up here, and I think that is actually going to be your four position support. Uh, she, he definitely doesn't really deserve a safe lane, and your Tide is most likely going to the offline. I, I don't think this is a support Tide. I think Spirit Breaker is going to be the one roaming about, and uh, I, I, we might get boots early, but he's, generally speaking, going to be that poor support. Uh, yeah, the the cow is a good hunter for Brood, and, you know, while they may not have the best clear for the spider lanes outside of the... Well, they have the Tide Hunter, the Shadow Fiend's decent, though it's kind of hard to track them down with the raises because they move so fast, but as long as you can just survive against the Brood and you get to the mid game, if you have heroes that can hunt that, that uh, pesky spider, then... You know, often you're going to be in good shape. So I guess the big question is, is this more of an offlane spirit breaker for RTK, or do you think it's even a, a support cow and they get something? Well, I guess it's RTK tied, so then mm -hmm. support spirit breaker, and they still need their safe laner for ZYF? Yeah, I believe that's going to be the general composition here. Probably something with... I was thinking some AoE for the bottom lane just so that if the broodmother does go there you have a taken care of but they pick up the brewmaster again do you think this is uh the classic king j brew this is something that he played a lot back in uh obviously patches of old and i i would love to see it again but uh, do you think it's going to be that core brewmaster that we actually could see better timings on or is it going to be him mm. in the offlane again eh, hard to s i think i think probably a safe lane brew mm-hmm I mean, the, the offlane brood is up against 
what? Uh, I mean, in theory, you could be up against the Tidehunter. I feel like that's what Tong... Tongfu just want to avoid that matchup. So, wherever they can send the Brood to avoid that Tide versus Brood matchup is probably what they're going to do. What about the consideration of Ehome potentially aggro trying? This is something that used to happen back in, like, 2012, is when the Broodmother was always picked up, always sent to the off lane. Uh, There's a lot of teams that would really just go for an aggressive tri lane and put a solo laner that was good against Brood. There was, like, Darkseer, Tidehunter, and Sand King seemed to be the most uh, impactful heroes in that. But as I say that, they go for a Centaur. So unless you're trying to go for, like, a Magic Missile Charge War Stomp composition, it would be a really, really awkward lane. I, I guess it will... I mean, yeah, it'll probably just be the safe lane Centaur, the off lane Tide, the mid Shadow Fiend, and the supports roaming where they need to be. But also an interesting pickup coming from Tong Fu for their last. Uh, I mean, I didn't expect the Centaur, but even less so the Omni Knight. You go ahead, you get the repel on somebody like a Broodmother, and she can just stand and fight. She has the lifesteal, she has the mischance against her opponents. Uh, obviously, you should have to worry about things like the swap, the anchor smash, but for the most part, if you have repel on you, you're golden as a Broodmother. Uh, this is uh, another very mobile hero, the Centaur, with his ultimate. So I think a, a good solution for these potential Orchid carriers as well. You know, they blink in, they silence you, and Centaur just pops Stampede and you run away. So yeah. uh, if they if they go Orchid, maybe Tong Fu just choose not to head that direction. But very unusual draft from Tong Fu. There's very little late game, very little physical damage as far as like their cores go, though. They do have the, a strong late game support duo, the Rubik, the Omni Knight, but uh, what do you think, man? Do you think this Rubik Omni Knight are going to make plays? They These are two heroes they can. Do you, do you feel like the matchup suits them this game? I mean, they can respond to the Spirit Breaker well enough. I think they'll do okay in the lanes. As far as the mid-game fights, I guess it comes down to positioning. If there's a Tide blinking on you, even if you get to repel off on one hero, it won't matter too much. They, they'll they be able to, to go for the Ravage, get the War Stomp double edge, and your Omni Knight will die. And then you don't have any heals, you don't have any Guardian Angel for the fight. And there's definitely some real weaknesses with their draft. I think they can get picked apart quite quickly if Ehome get the initiation they're looking for. And you know these guys are going to get blinks, right? Like RTK is going to be able to farm those Ancients, no problem. Uh, ZYF is going to be safe lane farming the Blink Dagger. So yeah, the, around the time the Daggers are up, Tong Fu have a lot to be worried about, but... Prior to that, um, you know, you've got your Broodmother kind of ruining the bottom lane and everything else just kind of spreading the map. We'll, we'll see how the early game plays out and if it is as dicey a mid-game as it would seem. All right. With that said, Blaze, we got to introduce the teams here. The creeps are about to spawn. On the side of Ehome, we've got Inflame, your Shadow Fiend going mid, Lanham going to be that support cow, the Spirit Breaker, DDC, the Venge, ZYF will be handling the Centaur. And that does put RTK... Under the tide hunter. By the way, uh, I got a tweet earlier. Someone was telling me that uh, his his chi the Chinese characters means fairies. So it's uh, fairies zyf. I think is his <laughs> full name. Just uh, at least what I've been told on Twitter. So uh, as for Tong Fu, the opposition trailing no one of the best of three. We've got King J on your off lane brood going mid is going to be Zex Bingo on the Quap already the supports LPC on the Omni Knight and ZQ the Rubik. And that does leave U9 as your safe lane brew. A lot of expectations for the safe lane brew. They want him to get something big done early. Yeah, but already we're going to be seeing some pressure coming out on the Queen of Pain. I mean, just getting dual lane against to get Shadow Fiend the early Necromastery stacks is going to cause Zex Bingo some real issues. It doesn't seem like this guy really likes to be under pressure, just in general. Like, he, he wants to be in kind of a position where he gets tempo in the lane. And being in that off lane was difficult for him. Now being under 2v1 pressure... It's not fun, but uh, yeah, it a lot with the the fact that they went for this hero spread. Ehome gets to go for the aggro duo, and at around level two for both the Centaur War Runner and the Spirit Breaker, I can see some real kill potential. Yeah, they they can definitely bully any any like two heroes that come their way from from Tong Fu. I feel the cow just matches up well against other melees. You, mm -hmm. you got the high armor, the the ridiculous HP early game, and well, not even, not to mention the man fighting potential. Lanes look pretty good here for Ehome so far. They've got the Tide versus Brood matchup. That's ideal for them. In Flame. Uh, this could be bad. Uh-oh, this is not ideal for him. Did I jinx him? I think I might have. Lift back on DDC, gets off the stun. The charge is coming in, though. Maybe they can turn this. That's one angry Lanham. Oh, no. Creeps. Tomato. Deny me. Oh. Yes. They, 
DDC able to plea and whisper to the creeps, and the tomato hears his cry and has mercy and will steal that first blood away from Tong Fu. And look at the chain stun here under U9. He's gonna be a clap back the other way. Lamb take a lot of hits to stout shield blocks. He needs a lot of them to charge as well. Bounces back U9 and U9 will fall. Lanham survives with 16 HP. Thank you, Stout Shield. And with that bash coming through, through the charge, that is actually Brewmaster going down under tower. I think now, if that's any hero besides Spirit Breaker, he dies there, right? I mean, even like an Ogre Magi has a little bit less effective HP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the magic damage is the important thing there with the clap. Zex Bingo, whoa, what a duel between him and the Shadow Fiend. Close quarters, uh, leveled blink, which is something weird. I don't know if that's a misclick, but either way. He yeah, that was probably like got excited of, in the heat of the fight and skilled the second point in blink. But hey, he's got a kill to show for it, so. There he's go. feeling good, that's man. Charged. Oh, this is bad. I think he's going to go the distance on this one. Is he lamb going in? No, uh, he might actually be dead. There's a yeah, Shadow Strike, it's... there's a Scream here, and there's a leveled up Blink. It's gonna be ready oh, a couple yeah. seconds sooner. Then I may end up going down to this. Oh, wow. He may have to deny the Ancients. This is getting clowny charge. Oh. Uh, he's running, oh, he stops with the clip. <laughs> he didn't want to charge through the tower because he would have died, but now Zex Bingo's gonna find him and, well, or maybe not. He whiffed the Scream. Lanham, are you kidding me? He's what serious. Deny the neutrals, he's gonna live. New meta juking. What? what in the world? <laughs> what is this game? Uh, this is level just two blink. Le next level counter cancel charged. Ancient denies. We've already got it all. Yeah, it really is just an action pack four minutes of just about everything you can ask for when you're looking for something different from the ah. Oh, there's always troll warlord and sniper in my games. Well, just watch E Home versus Tong Fu and you'll see something brand new, for sure. But uh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, right now the kill score, I, it's, I guess we're going to have to provide clarification every time we actually look at the kills as a whole, because we've got a neutral denial on both the both sides. So first blood went out for Tong Fu, and they are 2-0 on kills. They are 2-0 on kills, however, when it comes to farm, ROTK is having a, a nice time here bottom. Already 23 CS, so probably a couple spiderlings there, but still uh, one of your leaders in terms of net worth. So too the Centaur. Way up there for Ehum, and even the Shadow Fiend is, despite the deaths, having a good time. And, you know, having a level 2 blink is not really going to help you to, to bully and flame out a lane. He's already right back up to 22 souls, despite the death. But, uh, I mean, as far as, like, blink time needs to come out, that's a, a question for me. Like, RTK is going to go for the Arcane Boots early. He's still on a pretty good trajectory for the blink dagger, thanks to his Anchor Smash form. Ravage will be up soon, but the, the action is actually going to be top here. No stuns unless they get a bash. But, yeah, the nice telekinesis back means uh, Centaur Warrunner won't connect. So, they're under a lot of pressure here towards the top. Actually going to get a free D-Ward if they roam back over here. Fade Centaur or not. Centaur no. gets off the stomp. Heal comes out. All right. They're going to they're gonna disengage. This is a tough lane to go aggro on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the Omni Knight is really good defensive. The Rubik is a classic defensive support under tower. So, yeah, as long as they let U9 be the... the Frontline tanker, he's gonna be able to get the the farm he needs to without too much risk as long as the supports have mana. Um, but you know, charges can still come through to the mid lane, the side lanes, and uh, we'll have to see if they they try to roam away from the Omni Knight, who's providing so much coverage, or if the Brewmaster will just walk away from his support structure. Like if they they might not know this, they're gonna go. Yeah, he's nowhere near the Omni Knight in no man's land. Stomp comes out, double edge to follow. They got him. Land him able to bring him down, and again, he's getting the last hits, and meanwhile elsewhere, RTK has become your official net worth leader, despite being un entirely uninvolved in any kills, he's also not dying. He's got Arcane Boots, 700 gold in the bank, level 7 already, and it's gotten to that point where King J just does not want to even send Spiderlings down the lane, he just tries to skip the wave and avoid this pesky watermelon as much as possible. Meanwhile, Other I chased it Zex Bingo, blinking forward on DDC, but gets done. They can get off the double raise and they will. They bring him down. Oh, Level two comes. blink or not, you ain't running from that. And maybe DDC, no, doesn't need the d to be denied. He even survives through it. Oh, this is this is painful to watch for Tung Fu. Went for the blink yeah. scream, but just a little bit out of range when he when he screamed there. Doesn't end up getting the kill. 
Yeah. Another annoying thing was the award that gave them the information that Omni Knight was so far away from the Room Master is still alive. They had a sentry down in the trees, but it expired right when LPC went for the kill. So this is Omni Knight that's going to be without boots of speed for a while just because he had to buy another pair of sentries. All right. Well, that hurts. What's going to hurt more to me, though, if, if I'm Tong Fu, is trying to fight soon when RTK's got the mech, which he's already well on his way to. Picks up the Reign of Regen, I imagine. Either has recipes or will soon. It's... He's got the buckler on the courier entirely, so yeah. Completed is... buckler. So at this point, he he's also got the recipe for the headdress, so he just needs the mech recipe. That's going to be like a sub-10 minute mech on a tide with his Ravage ready. Mm -hmm. Now, he may not be able to leave bottom. That's the only issue. There's a brood here, but... I think the Shadow Fiend can probably rotate that direction, and Flame can still cover the tower pretty well, and it's only when the tower's under pressure. So as long as you have the TP scroll ready... Uh, I would say that he can push out a couple ways with his allies, maybe get a kill, and then he'll always be able to jump back. And with the free fortification, you, you should be able to keep this tier 1 tower up for a decent amount of time. Zex Bingo actually taking a double raise here. One more, and that would have been uh, kaput. But yeah, it's just going to be Kung Fu very much on the defensive. And I just don't see that situation changing for uh, 10, 20 minutes has been despite the i mean even with the the double denies for ehome the the spirit breaker as well as uh to the to the neutrals as well as down at the ancients it it doesn't really end up like aside from like the, the deaths they're, they're not really losing anything there and then they've just been out farming tong fu so much around the map and well they there have been no denies on the side of tong fu so they end up really really struggling here as we head towards the mid game <laughs> their, their supports are looking desperately poor. You've got a 750 net worth Omni Knight, and it's one thing if the Venge is very poor, but I, I feel like the Omni Knight's the hero that needs at least some basic items and levels to have an impact. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you need at least Boots of Speed to get to the fight. You would love to get more mobility tools like Four Staff and Blink to really actually help your teammate before they're already dead. Because the way Centaur ganks is so quick. It kills. The, they get the stun to connect, and then suddenly your health bar evaporates. But it is worth noting that King J's net worth isn't too shabby. He went for the Midas uh, opener after Soul Ring, which is not uncommon. Actually, going to be Stampede onto LPC, but Centaur is the one caught out. They get the kill there. It is a four hero rotation, which prompts a, a TP in from ROTK. He does not have his mech yet, but uh, it's actually all coming on the courier now. So they've got their tied mech. They're going to get the bottom lane to Lanham. Though he may struggle a bit to stay here as mid lane e home. Meanwhile, pushing with two. So they rotate the tide, hoping the counter things won't get any kills, but still, looks like they may even take a tower before this off lane brood can get it done. This is already down to, to half HP, and this time around, there, there ain't no tree on Protector in the game. Yeah, Lanham's a little at risk here. I mean, he doesn't have a TP scroll, so the best thing he can do is empowering haste away. Uh, he does not, there is no incapacitating bite, so there is not going to be a big slow, but he's still taking a big hit, and he'll have to charge away entirely. Bottom tower That's okay, though. Attack. This is given time for RTK to come back bottom. We'll see Lanham look to get mecked up here, perhaps, but a wild quap appears, grabbing the bounty rune and just driving herself towards the bottom lane. The tower's still at about half HP. I mean, now it looks like Inflame may push in that middle lane. They try to give it to LPC for some experience, but... He ain't, he's not stopping the Shadow Fiend from pushing, so if they don't rotate somebody else in, they're giving up a very early tower. Yeah, uh, the Brew can rotate pretty soon. Uh, TP Scroll and uh, Blink Dagger, he now has enough gold for that combo, but it seems late. a little bit too late. And they don't even get the tier one bottom in exchange. Like They're trying to spread the map out, force people to rotate, but the Ehome's movements are so efficient that they're able to just only rotate one or two, no overreactions, and they're always able to have an extra spare hero to take the key objective. ROTK chasing out Zex Bingo. He went in with the, the gush there, threatening like he might ravage, forces out the blink. Not going to commit, though, but he's got the mech, so... With the mech arcanes, you're, you're just you're not dislodging this tide hunter. There's there's hardly any stuns to begin with, and then you got Kraken shell anyway, and there's just no chance you kill him. 
One He's... one thing that's nice though is the tornado from the brewmaster. You throw him up in the air for a very large portion of the fight. That's the ravage as well as the mechanism taken out for that seven second duration. And yeah, you can't kill him, but at least you can render him ineffectual while you go and just kill off the other heroes. Like Shadowfee's not that tanky, and there they go. Just for now, using the magic stick, they still get the mech available if needed. They're gonna cyclone up the centaur. RTK will pop his mech, still his ravage in flame with the Zoni Requiem. Driving Tong Fu back a bit as the Centaur tries to come in. He gets stunned initially by a Boulder Toss. Another Cyclone. Great micro here from U9. Clap comes out, and before RTK can ravage, he goes down to a spawn. Spider lanes and Flame, though, turns with a double raise. RTK has the buyback, not using it. Stolen Requiem from Zinq coming out. Oh, man, oh. I feel like the Tide could have bought back there and turned that fight, but uh, does not end up doing it for RTK. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you would have assumed that the buyback, they just would have retreated, but I would assume that's even better than losing your Shadow Fiend Centaur. Centaur was pretty deep, so maybe it's just a Shadow Fiend you save with that buyback, but it's still probably the one that you want to keep alive for the fact that he needs gold, for the fact that he loses half his souls. Like, that was a, a very difficult fight for Ehome. The split came out, they didn't see the Blink Dagger, and... They got taken apart pretty quickly. I thought they'd go the route of disabling the Tide, focusing the SF. They went the exact opposite. They held the SF for later, and they were actually able to bring the Tide down despite that mechanism, just going to show that they have quite a bit of potential pure damage nuke between the purification and that sonic wave. Dagon. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, wow. Seriously? <laughs> Dagon um, Rush? I mean, I guess the Orchid's not going to be the best item. Tidehunter has the Kraken Shell. Shadowfiend's building a Yules. And you've got Centaur to heal someone, but I mean, the, the, I think the more standard item would probably be your Necro 3. That seems to be a very common choice for a lot of Brutes nowadays, but Dagon I did not expect. This is yeah. this is something we'd see on Brood, but not often as the first item. It's more of like your third or fourth item after you've gotten your, your core pickups. But you do I, the math. I love I love Dagon, man. I'm not complaining. I'm I'm all about this, but yeah. Like well, you get 700 magical nuke, you have already a lot of pure damage coming in from the the Queen of Pain, the Omni Knight. This people could just drop left and right, and these fights don't have to be sustained at all. They can be very bursty pickoffs, and uh, you just don't have the chance to really use the abilities you want to. Inflame did just pick up a Yules. Uh, he will reveal it now, so probably not going to get a, a quick kill with the Requiem, but. Yeah, I guess it's just a point where I have to watch everybody's HP and say, are, are, is there a possibility of Queen of Pain just casting one spell and then the Dagon and Spawn Spiderlings to come out? Tier 1 going to go for free down bottom for Ehome. They did commit all five heroes for it. But in the meantime, you've got U9, his ultimate cooldown, and uh, looking for his next item after Treads. Ehome, they'll begin to mount the pressure here bottom lane. They lay into the Tier 2. But the TP comes, and Q gonna rotate in. For now, he's got the, the stolen Requiem ready to go again. It's wearing off fairly soon. There's that cute lift into try to set up a Requiem combo, though. I don't think it's quite long enough to get it off, but it'll at least help you to hit a better one. It's, it's gonna be gone soon, though, so his fun will end, and I'll have to find a new spell to steal. Yeah. Probably clear out like a stack or something like that with it. It is a 36 soul uh, break and that's what Inflame put out, so it's mirrored by Rubik's Steel. But yeah, in the end, it was just kind of a nice debuff in the first fight and eh, threatening until it's end it concluded here. They do have a smoke and a seat. They're going to be using it onto four, it looks like, uh, if they Zex Bingo wants to fall back instead of farming. But uh, it looks like they'll hold that in reserve and wait till they have some better vision. If you look at the dire vision right now, no wards up whatsoever. They have no idea what's coming, smoke or not, but Centaur charging down mid lane. Does get the blink off on the Zex Bingo. Follow up comes through RTK. There's your Ravage. It's not stolen. Unfortunately, went for the empowering haste for ZenQ. Not ideal, but they turn with the Quapult. A brew split. They've brought down the Spirit Breaker. They're chasing DDC. Looks like he may end up falling. RTK also brought low. Finished off by a heal bomb and now they run down another. They're gonna bring down the Venge. That's three dead. The Shadow Fiend only now arriving to the fight. Man, you just imagine how good this lineup is if they get the Requiem and the Ravage, but we're not seeing them used together. No, it just seems like, I mean, charging down, they didn't expect opposition. They expected a quick pick, and that's what they were ready for. And in Flame actually getting jumped on in full. He'll get a nice Requiem off, but the Repel comes through. The rest of the damage is nullified, and it's I mean, gonna look be. At, look at that. That's... That he almost kills four heroes by himself. Imagine if he fights yeah. with the tide. That's just, that's just a bad time to engage without going in without your, 
your key damage dealer in the team fight. Ehome yeah, well, is not in sync. I was talking about vision, and I, I well, mostly the dire seemed to be the the weak point. But it actually, radiant vision in that particular area, they didn't know what was right behind the queen of pain at the time. So they really were just expecting a four v one, and just the fact that they were charging and had the blink on the centaur, they assumed that was a freebie. But Omni Knight is w probably like the only hero that can turn that the way that he did. I mean, I guess the Abaddon Abaddon would be comparable, but th that's about it. Like, even if you delay it with a disruption or something like that, uh, what's the other one? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just like, you can react with a lot of heroes, but Omni Knight and Abaddon are the only two that I think could actually keep Queen of Pain to, alive to the degree that they did, and then turn the fight uh, to such a degree. That was actually very empowered by LTC. Top tower is under attack. King J officially now a seized position as the most farmed hero in the game. <laughs> He's gonna start leveling up the Dagon. Man, I, I hope he gets the max Dagon Ethereal Blade and it just starts like one shot zapping players. That would be that would be an absolute treat to watch. It's been a while since I've seen King J in action. It's fun to have him back though. We haven't really seen him get to own just yet, but this could be the game. So far two zero and zero. It's Tang Fu. Head towards one, one thing I'm thinking about this build, and if they had this in mind from the onset, King J offlane, building the Dagon. Uh, do you think that they could have gone for a Zeus instead of a Queen of Pain, or do you think that's too hard countered by BKB? Because hmm. you think about it, like, Bruce roaming around the jungle looking for a quick pick, and uh, zaps the Dagon spawn spider dungs. You get a Thunder God's Wrath on top, that's going to be a lot more kills, but Zeus is easier to gank, and when BKBs come out, both heroes don't do anything. Zeus is pretty much food for offlane Spirit Breaker, though. Like, that's... Okay. Yeah. I guess that's the one worry there. But yeah, in the mid game, having the Zeus plus the the Broodmother is a nice combo. Very, very high kill potential. I don't know, it seemed like they, they picked the Quap first, right? And then it was a Brood second pick, I think. Yeah. It feels like they picked the Quap just so they would have, like, we have one here that's going to win its lane, not just, like, fit into a bigger game plan. I don't know if Tong Fu necessarily had thought too far ahead as far as that. It seemed like they picked Brood, they picked Queen of Pain. They just really want to make sure they dominate the lanes in general. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know if Zeus really fits that mentality. Although he could work otherwise in the draft. Sure, sure. So, uh, I mean, right now, I, I would have to say that Tong Fu kind of have a, a little bit of a time schedule. Like right now, they have the Aghanim Scepter on the Queen of Pain, good pure damage coming out from her, but Broodmother is also going a nuking build. So this means that they really, as People get tankier and strength items come out, even towards harder to rask type stuff. Ehome is going to be able to survive, and they're going to be able to put out much more physical damage with the Venge's amplification, the presence of the Dark Lord, and just in general, like they have better scaling on their agility. So, yeah, I'd have to say that uh, Tong Fu need to make something happen pretty soon, but uh, it looks like the jungle is going to be their first step that direction. Lanham, he charges, then he gets off the ultimate. He kind of stopped here on the high ground, then ends up. Uh, Get, being just lifted and tossed back. Meanwhile, Inflame runs in. or end up killing off your Rubik. Has the Blink Dagger as well as the Yules. Did you Could, see that Nether Strike? Yeah. He, uh, he jumped off the cliff and pushed him back. Like, it doesn't even do the pushback because you don't have Greater Bash. It's, it's something that happens in Ability Draft a lot as people skill, get the Nether Strike thinking that it does something. But if you don't have the Greater Bash along with it, then it doesn't. It actually will not do anything but jump you to them and do the basic amount of damage. Like, it's actually a really funny spell. And the fact that it's instant with Rubik and his cast animations makes it even more hilarious looking. Yeah, it's still a decent disable, I guess, but not, not bringing the heavy damage. Ehome going to move into the dire jungle now. They just smoked for this. They find LPC, and they don't really get off too many nukes, but they just auto-attack him. Swap, he's dead. And they can push through now. They don't have creep support, but it seems like they want to muscle up on this tower. Ravage online, your hood online, RTK gonna be the the pipe mech tide, it seems. Uh, feels like a bygone relic of a forgotten age. We, we don't see this. This is like your old school five man Dota tide hunter, or four protect one tide. But Dyer's middle tower is under attack. It's been all about the refresher, Shiva's, like just straight refresher rush usually type build. But this is something old school from, from an old school player. Seems fitting. Yeah, I mean, it, it works out. He's just kind of like that mobile tank that the, everybody walks around. It's just like he's going to be providing cover so they can fire from behind him. And 
that's a, a nice formation for them to just go for an overall siege assault. Um, it, one thing is, it makes me wonder why Rubik's even bothering stealing from the Spirit Breaker. If skills are that, the skills are really that bad. Like he stole the empowering haste right when a ravage came out, and I just gotta say, like, try for other spells because empowering haste is kind of weak. The charge isn't great, and the the ultimate literally just does 150 damage and blink strikes. It doesn't bash. It doesn't anything. It's terrible. Oh wow, Venge. A lot of hate on that vengeful spirit, but I guess those are short cooldown zaps at this point. There used to be a vengeful there. Now there's just a bloody pile of guts. They're going to move into the pit on the back of that Tung Fu, looking for their Roche. Seems to claim an Aegis rather easily, and there's no real contest here coming from your Radiant Squad. Though they're built to fight, they, they just don't have the map control or positioning to get it done. So they'll let it go, but, you know, it's not like Tung Fu have the best lineup to really take advantage of the Aegis. It's not great to give this up if you're E-Home, but it still feels like a manageable Aegis. If they play defensively, just fight as a squad around the towers, use Ravage and Requiem together. They're still very attack. scary in those engagements. Man, I think it's a pretty good call just to farm the map right now. If they can look at the next fight and say, we're wiping you out as, as five with these big ultis, then it doesn't really matter if Kung Fu has the Aegis, because that person that respawns will be respawning alone, because everybody's taking about the same level of damage. What do you, what do you so, think about this, Blaze? We're seeing double hood. Yeah. I, I, you're up against a Quap with an... With an eggs, I mean, it's pure yeah. damage. So I, I don't know. Is this really, is this really a double hood game for Ehome? It's kind of just along the lines I was saying before. Is they just want to tank up? It's yeah. gonna be mostly against the Broodmother. It says, okay, I can safely go into the Radiant Jungle. Maybe hold the Gem of True Sight would be great. And then you don't have to worry about getting dig on Ford. It's not great against the Queen of Pain though. It's just kind of okay. There's some damage here and there, but the big thing is. I won't die to Dagon, and my, in the case of ZYF, the double edge won't hurt as much. In the end, as long as they don't build pipe, I I, I see some redundancy, but uh, I feel it's like still I feel like maybe just get a BKB on one of the heroes. I don't know. I mean, hmm. like BKB on one, pipe on the other, the even just a casual cloak. But Hood is a pretty big investment when you're up against sure. like like single target burst and. Like a decent amount of pure damage, the the Omni Knight heal, the the Quap ulti. Well, we'll yeah. see. I, we'll see. It does have an easy build up. That's one good thing the hood is going for it. So may have spent some unreliable gold before dying and Radiant's saved a little bit that way. But uh, E home for now. Just gonna try to hold off their, at their towers while Tang Fu make their move. Who nine up on the high ground here has the ulti at the oh. ready. Look who came blinking into four. Gets ripped into the air. He'll cyclone himself. But when he comes back down, oh, they're, they're waiting. He coming out of the Yules just got his BKB off the courier. Pops it immediately, but yeah, the, the Queen of Pain Sonic Wave will go right through that. So he just dies anyways. And I gotta say, Inflame has Inflame has been farming really well, but Radiance his execution in the fights attack. and just his, his like overall Radiance aggression has really been costing him. Mm -hmm. He just keeps on getting caught and punished. I, I, I think the ZYF's build is okay here, going for the hood into heart. I, I, I think a casual cloak into heart probably would have been a smoother transition for the step function that is his item progression. Like, he needs uh, he needs the the bigger HP pool before he really worries about the upgraded cloak. But we There's see already the split. they're trying to kind of half defend this, and it costs their lives. Well, DDC going to tank the bulk of the Bruce split damage here. Will end up going down. They repel Zex Bingo. Well, Cyclone RTK, and from the north comes a backstab attempted by Lanham. He bashes LPC a bit here, but now the Omni Knight ult, and they're going to turn onto the cow and try to win this fight. They bring him down. Inflame going to rejoin. They blink. They stomp. Onto Zex Bingo. They'll pop the Aegis. Requiem at the ready. Not trying for Requiem on top of him. Does not have BKB. They do it with a Ravage and some raises. They'll get the kill. And now ZinQ, King J may end up being forced back here. There's your Yules. Dropping down that Brewmaster into a stomp, but the Dagon brings in Flame down to half health. They will let him go for now, though. Don't have much follow up for that Dagon. Yeah, PC, I mean... Rut Row. We're not done yet. Swap. Back into tower. Has a heal at the ready and stun. Nope, oh, still repelled. It's going to wear off, but at a, at a good time as he's able to wind his way around the tree line. Still, your blink oh! double edge coming. He repel dodges a stun, but uh, it doesn't look like it's going to matter. One more auto attack. Should get the job done, and indeed it will.
Yes. Space creative though. I mean, that is going to be the entire respawn time of the Queen of Pain and the Brewmaster. This tier two should live just based on the fact that he kind of played Ring Around the Rosie with them. A quick death, and that's not. That's just going to be at least the tower dropping down to 20%. You try to afford it, and then you lose the fight anyways. Nah, this was actually a really good uh, defense mounted, and it's going to be harder for Ehome to actually siege this without everybody involved. Obviously, there's no Ravage. There is going to be a stampede, but that's just to get out in the case they try to commit to something. Yeah, I'm just farming up the enemy woods. They've got nice aggressive wards here. One blocking the, the big camp about to expire. A, a lane ward freshly planted as well. Giving them good vision of Tong Fu's movements, but I'll have a period of calm here with Ravage cooling down. Ehome trying to reestablish their map control. At the same time, Tong Fu also has some good wards. You see one up near the top side of the the Radiant Ridge, just below their Tier 2 top lane. And another another Hell Ward here for the Dire around mid. So they, they've got good vision. No Roche coming for a couple of minutes. See Flame moving in to farm the wave. He is still your leader in terms of net worth. And the CS off the charts for him. Almost 100 CS up on any other hero in the game. But in spite of that, it's 4-4-3. Four, four, and three. has not had that explosive fighting performance just yet but he makes up for it with farm and is still getting towards the late game shadow fiend build the butterfly may be the next choice here up to 2500 for now invis on the move looking for an easy pickoff the u9 might be that pickoff of choice the yules and the requiem of course available but just gonna be broodmother finding a dagon kill on bottom purification as well just to add to that burst and yeah that Breaker becomes a crater very quickly, but oh. a mid lane we're gonna see no no real success there No, I want to talk about the, the items that are coming out I think yeah RTK is in a little bit of trouble But while we keep tabs on that look at the items that are coming out for Tong Fu very very shortly We've got three BKBs in route just a couple of minutes and they're gonna hit a huge team fight power spike uh, BKB coming out for Brewmaster Queen of Pain and the Broodmother that's on top of Repel So they've got essentially four BKBs active in the team fight and Ehome just need to focus on physical damage. You mentioned that Butterfly and Shadow Fiend. It has to be something along those lines because otherwise they're just going to be saying, okay, well, our spells do nothing and we're screwed. They can walk away from the BKBs with Stampede and that's ideal. But if they get still caught out by Telekinesis, by the Brew Control, and they can't disengage, then uh, those BKBs will be the death of them this game. Here comes a little more pressure. Tong Fu moving in, Spiderlings ready. Zing Q posting up with King J as well as LPC. They force staff him and get the quick lift. Now they've stolen the charge. They're going to use it onto Lanham to try and turn it, but he charges himself back <laughs> towards safety and immediately gets swapped out. Very awkward series of events here, but it ends with LPC trapped under the enemy tower, repelled as well as using his ultimate, which somehow makes his way out in the midst of everyone on the side of Ehome. Well, it does cost them the Omni ult, but in the end, he, he manages to retreat to safety. Yeah, that was a pretty awkward fight, to be honest, but uh, if you can even call it that. But Landon doesn't feed again. That's the important thing. Uh, survives. Uh, just keeps on doing his thing. And yeah, he'll be in a pretty good position to get involved in the subsequent fights. He is going to go for chain mail so could i mean i don't think blade mail is going to be good against all these bkbs could consider a very long-term build of the ac uh or since they don't have it a medallion wouldn't be too bad but hmm. yeah uh the one thing i want to talk about is tide's refresher he's going to be working on it now oblivion staff to begin nice mana in general but they got the jump mid though they want to go on lpc gush comes out repels there and oh, one more auto attack they get the kill nice blink forward by inflame now they can look for a push, please. Looks like this tier two is going down. So, as far as that BKB count we were talking about, all three acquired, only the Repel and the Grave. So, they can dodge out one Ravage, but if... Asking, whoa, whoa, that pickoff should not have occurred. I mean, what would a Rubik be doing there? He was trying Still. to run, but uh, they just end up like catching him on the retreat, and unfortunately does not have the blink yet, uh, or just has the four staff, and not, not enough to get away. Yeah, but you know these guys are gonna be jumping you. They got charge. They've got blink centaur. They could stampede Radiant if they really want to. Soon enough, Avenge is gonna be level 11, and swap is a threat. Like positioning Radiant is the most important thing for Tong Fu right now, and those kind of mistakes cost you big. Still, the zaps continue to be chucked out here. As Inflame loses half his health to a Dagon. Now your Brew initiates blink. 
BKB, Ravage is ready, Bruce Split is also ready. So he blows the first BKB charge, Radiant's that's the 10 second. But they do hold the high Radiant's ground. Tower has At least fallen. for now. But yeah, like you said, Refresher's coming soon. They get their heart up on the Centaur. These cores are getting very tanky and durable. RTK, Mech, Hood, the super tanky Centaur now. And even the Shadow Fiend is that completed Butterfly that you mentioned, Blaze. So they're all starting to beef up. And it's going to be more and more difficult for Tongfu to find instant picks with the their combo of spells and nuke damage as the game moves along. Mm-hmm. Lanham is actually going to go for a blade mail, so I can't say I agree with that considering what they're up against. But a, if he gets it on like the Queen of Pain when she doesn't expect it, maybe there there's some pure damage that'll be a big problem. And he's already got two big items that'll help their fight. The, the treads, the Vladimir's, he'll stay involved and he'll provide a nice aura for the SF. We're actually going to see Rubik charged. Uh, they do have telekinesis and they will get it off. He's stolen the Anchor Smash, was just checking to see if ROTK's been disciplined, you know. Maybe you get that Ravage. It's always worth the shot, but oh. RTK did not feed away his Ravage this time, at least not too carelessly. Yeah. Uh, one thing, you were talking about the Brewmaster BKB charge, and I actually think that's perfectly fine for him to use it every fight. Uh, like, Brewmaster doesn't really just sit in BKB for more than five seconds. He, he might for, like, three to four, and then he'll pop the split anyway, so... Yeah, overall, I, I think it's per it doesn't really matter if he spams his BKB pr for the fights. It, he's still going to be pretty much focusing on his ultimate until very, very late in the game. Yeah, and also Brew often, if he gets to late game, his normal build is like that Abyssal, AC Abyssal Refresher, so... Wow, Inflame! Dude, I'm telling you, Thanks. man, this Dagon is half his health. Yeah, I, do you think they're going to... I mean pipe for him i guess zyf would be the only person since tide has the refresher on a shopping list yeah i don't know i'd rather see one pipe than two hoods but i mean maybe it's, <laughs> maybe that's just me yeah it kind of feels like tide had to go something before he went for the refresher though like let's say that the progression is arcane mech blink and then you're looking for your next item going refresher when you're only like level 12 13 it's just a little early. You're not going to have the mana for it. So kind of an intermediary item and uh, allows him to more, more safely farm against the brew, Brood. Not ideal, but it's just free gold to spend. Roche is going to go down quick, though. Yeah. Roche is in the offing here. ROTK going to mosey into the pity. Blink oh. forward. There's your Ravage. Find three. Wow. Requiem's coming. It hits on one or two, but BKBs were popped here. The Brew, as well as the Quap, able to survive. Brew split goes out. King J not dying just yet. He gets into the web and flames. Last auto attack missed because he faded in time. They've gotten nothing so far. Everybody on Tongfu nearly finished off by this. And finally, they all start to crumble like a house of cards. But on the backside is King J. He'll zap one. His Dagon's cooling down in 17. He might be able to start tasering a few additional heroes. There will be a TP out from your brew back to the well. Man, everybody down to just like slivers of precious hit points, but now they mosey into the pit and they're gonna take an Aegis. They steal it, they get the kills, and Nihom able to just punish Tongfu for their rush attempt. That is the dream right there. A three-man Ravage against heroes that all have BKB. It was so funny too, he like, he blinks in, like, well, first he picks up the Invisor, and then he just randomly blinks into the pit and just presses R. You know? <laughs> they didn't actually have vision in the pit. They probably suspected it. I think they'd seen some Tongfu heroes in the neighborhood, but you know, it's just classic RTK. He's, just, he's either making the really clowny plays or the super epic ones, and, and that one mm -hmm. ends up being super epic. Did he blink in the fade time? Was that why he was it still invis among all Yeah, three? yeah. He blinked while he That's was That's crazy. That is just the, the minute timing that... Catches you so off guard, you're like, did I see a tie? Oh my gosh, we're all ravaged. And uh, luckily they got the BKBs off before the Requiem really took effect, or that would have been the fastest fight you've seen. But uh, yeah, in the end, it's still extremely If he had a refresher for, you there, that's, oh, that's gosh. three heroes instantly dead. Jeez. Uh, I, I've seen enough hentai to know where that one's going. That is disgusting. Jeez. <laughs> I have not, I don't think I've seen any hentai, and I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> Bottom lane. Chase goes on to ZYS, he'll pop his stampede and retreats out. Coming from the rear is in flame. Now he blinks over the creep wave, but gets isolated a bit. They force, lift him, drop him back down again, dropping low off the bat. The Quapple gonna instantly pop your ages. 
able to burst him with very low commitment here. And now a charge forward. The cow going deep, but really wants LPC. That's the hero to focus. Get that pesky Omni Knight out of my fight, says Inflame and friends. And they'll bring down one. The Brew will split. King J forced back. As the Brew split is going to be mostly dealt with, forcing it back towards the high ground here. Kung Fu going to lose their tier 2 bottom. Now the question becomes, do they go high ground? They've got Ravage. They may try for it. Blink a stomp again. They get King J this time. Doesn't have the buyback. Dead for a minute. Mega kill streak down. This could be a lane of Rack. See home. Might be able to 2-0 Tong Fu here. They're getting close, Blaze. So they will tank a full Queen of Pain ultimate. Four heroes affected, but they just keep on trucking. They'll bring down the tower. They're working on the racks. And Tong Fu, in a matter of moments, may have just fallen apart after that Roche fight. Now the charge coming out. ZQ stealing Stampede. He runs out of the Ravage range, but he still gets caught by the charge. You can't run from the cow. They've lost three. Omni Knight just respawning. It's going to be a fifth down over the course of the past fight and a half. And Ehome, maybe even just going throw. No, no. Okay, GG. There you go. Both of these games with very abrupt endings. Just one fight and all of a sudden, okay, well, we lost. Yeah, I mean, it falls apart just that quickly. They stack their house of cards, but those key initiations coming in from ROTK, uh, just, I mean, he actually got more farm than the Centaur for most of this game here, and it kind of just that safe lane against the Brood really profited for him. So in the end, they had that fight that you've been you've been hyping for a long time, Tide and Shadowfiend, uh, in the same place, just being oh, oh, I mean, I was hyping it, but let's be real, like like we were talking, they got two BKBs, and, and I think like the other hero didn't die. It was, it was, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It I wasn't mean, quite as hype as I was hoping for, but it was still cool to see them at least try to execute the combo for once. Yeah, and I mean, imagine if they didn't go for those BKBs. Those all came out about the same time, and they saved their lives two or three times, but the, the initiation was still too good. Like, they could follow through with all these engagements. It's not just they get the Ravage, and then everybody walks away with half their lives and BKB active. It's, yeah, we get a great start, and then about six or seven seconds later, we're stampeding, we're chasing, we're charging. We're swapping and we're still able to uh, find a, a few more kills that just make tips it over the edge tips the scales tong fu going down hard and that's a disappointing zero two for them all right well with that said blaze that wraps it up man thank you so much for joining me i know it was an early start for you and a, a late start for me depending on how you want to look at it but thank you for bringing helping the bring some chinese dota to the viewers man Absolute pleasure. I mean, obviously, Ehome, I, I was disappointed when I saw that Mushi and Ohio did leave, but seeing the two teams branching off and kind of having their own varied success, it it's awesome. I, I really like to see RTK and Lanham with this lineup, and uh, I really hope to see more of them in the future. I mean, right now it seems like Chinese Dota is like those top three Titans since IG got back on in the ball game, but Ehome, they show some real potential to contest those uh, Tier 1 teams, and I, I can't wait to see more. All right, well, with that said, folks, if you enjoyed Blaze's casting, you should go ahead and follow him on Twitter, at Blaze Casting. As for myself, you can find me at LD Dota. Guys, thank you very much for watching today's Summit 3 China Action. Phase 2 will continue. We've got about a week of games ahead of us. Maybe it's five or six days to come, and when we're all done, one team is coming to Los Angeles to join Vici Gaming as they represent China at the Summit 3 by Gigabyte G1 Gaming. Once again, thank you very much, Blaze. And with that said, folks, that wraps up the broadcast. We are going to have Starletter Europe starting in just a few moments, I believe. Let me see if I can get you more exact info on that. It is going to begin in, uh, I think, an hour. We've got, or wait, no, am I wrong about that? I might be wrong about that. Uh, it might be three hours, actually. I'm not sure. But anyway, there will be Starlighter Europe. I know Secret and Alliance are playing in three hours. I think Gods and PPD are going to be casting that. So definitely check that out, guys. But for now... It's LD and Blaze signing off. See you next time. I was actually one of the first people to sign up on Vulcan. It's a chance to not only win money, but do it in a way that's like really exciting. I entered in one $10 contest to stealing you know, a little lucky that day, um, and actually I won $400. When I tried out for the Caitlin Headshot one, that's only 10 bucks. I won $1,000. The price pool is up to a million dollars. Play on Vulcan, watch League, get paid. Support this channel by checking out Vulcan.com. Use the invite code below.